Hi guys! Today we're starting this video a little bit differently. So as you can see, I'm starting off with my inking process. Now I don't usually show my inking process because it takes me a really long time. But I wanted to like give a sort of overview because I got new ink and I think it'd be nice for people who are interested in doing Cubic art. So it's the Winsor Newton drawing inks. So the line has a lot of colors. I got mine in peat brown. It's really nice for making brown line art because sometimes black line art can look really harsh with some art that you want to make look more delicate. So the ink is really liquid. It's more liquid than your usual ink. It almost reminds me of fountain pen ink but it's not advisable to use in fountain pens because it contains shellac. So the ink is Copic proof so it won't smudge when you use alcohol markers over it and it's really nice because I find that a lot of colored ink tends to smear. It can damage the tip so it's not good. It's a really liquid ink so it flows well with the marinade. That's what I was using to do the details on the flowers and the hair. So yeah, it's also nice for doing ink washes. I see some people like they make wash drawings or they do like a watercolor style painting with them. I'm just not sure about their light fastness compared to regular watercolors. They might be dye based but yeah it's a really good ink and it comes in a lot of colors so if you want to make colored line art but you don't want to use a multi-liner because it's really inconvenient to get the different line thickness. It's, I find that it's better to use a dip pen and colored ink. It's more convenient for me. So yeah, so I started off the skin coloring a little bit differently. I did the shading first and then I blended out. I was trying a new technique because it might be more con it might conserve ink more because I find I tend to use a lot of ink in my drawings. Sometimes it's not needed. And yeah, I think it worked well. It's it was I don't usually shade with the E00 family a lot. They're the more pinkish skin tone, but this time I did. Instead of using using my usual E50 and E51 and E21. I think it looks nice for the picture. It looks really girly and youthful. I also colored the lips in this time, which is new to me because I don't color lips in. But I wanted to try something new and it fit the character quite well. The character is Kuitong. Yeah, I think it's Kuitong. She's from the Chinese webcomic Their Story or Tata Kushi. It's a it's a, it's not really Yuri, it's more for like a shoujo eye webcomic, but it's really funny and cute. It's being translated at Yaoi BL series blog on Tumblr, so go check it out. So yeah. So I just finished colored the eyes and then I started coloring the hair. I find that blonde hair is really tricky to color at times because if you make it too yellow, it looks a bit unnatural, but if you make it too brown and ashy, it tends to look a bit dead. So to get that balance, I started off with using a light yellow, it was earlier, and then I fill in with an ashy light beige color, sort of similar to Elsa's hair color, just to neutralize the yellow. But I still wanted a hint of yellow there, so adding the yellow base helps in not making the hair look too flat and gray. And then I darken up the shading with a slightly darker beige. The same family from E40, it's E41. And I didn't really like some of the stuff I had going on in the bangs, so I dab it out with a bit of colorless blender. So yeah, the colorless blender is really your best friend because it's good for blending out mistakes or like when ink tends to run out of the drawing and then I shade with the darker beige it's E42 and then I go back sometimes with a light yellow just to not make the hair look too brown because you still want to make it look like she's blonde and then I refine the shading and I add a lot of contrast I find that the secret to getting hair to look good is to add a lot of contrast because hair is more greasy and shiny than the rest of the body so it tends to reflect a lot more light 
so by adding contrast you can make the hair really pop so yeah so we if you add a lot of shading and then add really nice different colors of the spectrum just to make it pop rather than like using just brown or just yellow it really helps with it and then I use a really dark brown to shade the parts of the hair that are behind their head because it's the part where it doesn't get much light so it's really dark and they shade around the flower crown because it's also really dark there and then I blend out the dark brown with the lighter beige just so it doesn't look too harsh I want it to be high contrast but you still want it to look like it's blended smoothly So yeah, I just repeat that a lot. I find that hair coloring hair is probably the most fun because you can be you can let loose with it and just add a lot of contrast and it tends to look nice. And then for the flowers, I'm actually starting out coloring the rose with the shadows first because I wanted to blend out shadows to make it look really soft. So I'm using a dark pink to shade and then a lighter pink to blend it out and then I'm using an orange a really light orange just to make it look like the rose isn't really flat and then I define the light by adding a really light yellow in it's the same yellow I used for the hair just to make the rose pop a bit more and then a desaturated pink for the really dark spots and then for the violets I actually started out with blue because I didn't want it to be just violet and then I add a bit of yellow for the light, although not too much because if you add too much of the yellow, it tends to look weird with the violet, it gets muggy. And I shade with a blue violet from the center and then I blend out with the blue. And the secret to getting really nice blends with the Copics is to be patient with the blending. Like they blend well, but sometimes going back over what you shaded with the lighter color helps. And then I'm doing the same technique for the rose as I did earlier. But Kind of defining it less and I added less yellow to it because it's not in focus. And for the smaller flowers, I just dot in a bunch of yellows and browns. And then for the leaves, I use a yellow green and then add yellow for the light just so it pops out more. You can be crazy with your color choices. Like sometimes something that's blue, you can use like purple to shade it and it'll still look nice. It depends on the lighting. And don't be afraid to experiment with different color. And then lastly, I just define the eyes again and add a bit of a darker tone to the light what I did earlier. Just to make the eyes pop. So, yeah. And then we find the shading. So, yeah, that was my Kutong Speed Paint. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have suggestions on what you'd want to see next, just comment down below. I'd love to hear what you think. So thanks for watching!